This viscast will look at a collision problem in two dimensions. Pause the video now to read through the question carefully. Now that you've read through the question, you should realize that what's being asked is about the motion of one of the objects in the collision after the collision has occurred. And quite a lot of information is there about the motion of the objects before the collision. For example, one of them is moving at six meters per second um, to begin with, and the other one is at rest. And then after the collision, we know the motion of one of the objects. We know the white ball in this case, uh, we know it's changed its direction and is now moving at a different speed. The last piece of information we have is something about the relative mass of the two objects. To begin with, it's useful to draw a diagram to see what the physical situation actually looks like. We're told we have a ball moving along here, the white ball that is, at 6 meters per second, and it's going to collide off center, we're told here, with the 8 ball, which is initially not moving at all. And then the collision occurs, and afterwards we have now, if we take the direction that the white ball was originally moving, we now have the white ball moving at some angle to that, in fact we're told it's 18 degrees, and now moving at 5.6 meters per second. And the question is really asking us to think about what's going on with the 8 ball, the other object after the collision. From experience we might make a guess on our diagram that maybe the other ball will move off in some direction as indicated there. Now we can take an educated guess as to where that will be and then when we do the calculation the numbers that we calculate should give us some indication as to how good or otherwise our guess was. So how do we approach this problem? It's a collision problem so a reasonable thing to look at is do I expect momentum to be conserved in this collision? If I was to look at just the white ball, as it goes from its initial uh, motion to its final motion, it's clearly changed its velocity, it hasn't changed its mass, and it would have changed its momentum. So in fact the momentum of, of the white ball, for example, will not be conserved. And the same will hold for the eight ball. But if I think of my system as being both of these objects together, and I think that I'm looking at them on a horizontal table and for the moment I don't need to worry about any vertical motion. I'm simply thinking of these objects moving in the plane of the pool table. Then ignoring any friction forces that might occur, or if you like, thinking about my collision approximation that says the collision happens over a short time during which the, the force of the collision is much larger than any other forces involved. So I can consider any friction forces here to be negligible from just before until just after the collision, then this system here has no net force acting upon it. Again, there might be some internal forces between parts of the system, but the net force on the system of two pull balls here will in fact be zero. And that tells me the important property now that the momentum of the system will not change. It's a conserved quantity. So from just before the collision to just after the collision, I know that the momentum won't change. And so that means, another way to write this, is that the momentum finally will equal the momentum initially. And importantly, as I've written there, these are vector equations. The momentum is a vector quantity, so when I draw the equations up, I remember that they're vector quantities that I'm dealing with. Now, because it's in two dimensions, this problem, we can see there's not just one direction. In fact, I'm, I'm dealing with these pool balls, again, in the plane of the pool table. Then I most usefully can think about this vector problem as the components of the vectors. And they become essentially scalar equations when I consider the components. Now, I need to draw up some coordinates here. Um, so a sensible choice, a, a useful choice might be to make one of my coordinates, let's say, for example, the x direction, in the direction that my uh, white ball was initially moving in, and I'll make the y direction the direction at right angles. In this case, I'll make it uh, up the page. You can redo the problem with that coordinate down the page, and you'll find, of course, it makes no difference. And now I can simply think of these components and apply my momentum conservation. Um, let's begin, perhaps, with uh, considerations in the x direction. 
how can I now apply my momentum conservation in the x direction? Um, I'll start with the final momentum here. The final momentum, uh, and I'm, maybe I need to label these objects here. I'll call this object one and this object two. That'll make it a little bit easier uh, to write out what I'm doing. So if I'm going to write the final momentum of the system, I can think of the momentum of each of the objects independently and add them up. Of course, I need to now think of the components. So I will have, for the white ball, I have m1, and now I want its final velocity in the x direction. And if you think about that final velocity in terms of x and y components, you should be able to see that's going to be 5.6 times the cosine of 18 degrees. That's the component of the white ball's final velocity in the x direction. And I need to add to that the component in the x direction of the velocity of the eight ball. And for the moment, I'll just call that velocity V2. So that will be M2 V2 in the x direction. So there's my final momentum and I'll need to make that equal to the initial momentum of the system in the x direction. And so that will be m1 multiplied by 6 for that part of the initial momentum and of course I'd need to add the horizontal momentum of ball 2 before the collision. We're told it's not moving so that's actually kind of an easy one, that's just plus zero. What I can do now with this equation is uh, rearrange it to make V2x the subject of the formula. So I'm going to try to find out about this motion of the eight ball after the collision. So I'll start off here by trying to find its velocity in the x direction. So I can rearrange this equation to find out what V2x is going to be. And you should be able to see if I get through the step by step. I want to get rid of this m1 multiplied by 5.6 cosine 18 degrees off this side. So I'll subtract it from both sides. So I'll get m1 times 6, which was there on the right hand side, minus m1 times 5.6 cosine 18 degrees. That would leave me with m2 times v2x. So if I divide both sides by m2, I'll just get V2x by itself. And another step I should be able to easily do here is I can see that M1 is a common factor for both of those terms on the top line. So I can just take it out. This is going to be 6 minus 5.6 cosine 18 degrees. And that's going to be all divided by M2. Now I seem to be doing reasonably well here except that I don't know values for m1 and m2, but I do know something about the relative mass. The question stated that the mass of the white ball, that is m1 in my problem, was only 70% of the mass uh, of the eight ball, that is m2. So I could write that down as m1 equals 0 0.7 m2. That's what the question says. Or to rearrange that, m1 divided by m2 equals 0 0.7. And in this uh, expression here I have m1 divided by m2, so I know that just has the value of 0 0.7. So I can now rewrite this calculation as 0 0.7, that's m1 divided by m2, multiplied by 6 minus 5.6 cosine 18 degrees. And when I do that calculation, I wind up with a number of 0 0.472 meters per second. I might just for the time being over here keep track of that, but I now know that V2x equals 0 0.472 meters per second. So if I now think about the y direction, again we apply our conservation, but now we're looking at the y components. So the final momentum in the y direction for the white ball here will be m1 multiplied by its velocity component which you should be able to see there is going to be 5.6 now multiplied by the sine of 18 degrees to get the component in the y direction and now I need to add on the y component 
uh, the final velocity uh, of the final momentum for the eight ball and we can see there I'll just call that um, m2 times v2 y and what that has to equal of course is the initial momentum in the y direction well quite easily of course uh, the eight ball here has no momentum in any direction it's sitting stationary there before the collision and the white ball here before the collision was moving only in the x direction in fact that's how we chose our coordinate set so both of these actually have to add up to zero the initial momentum in the y direction is zero and once again I can rearrange now a little bit more simply um, and the expression here to make v2y the subject of this expression um, so I'm going to need to subtract off m1 times 5.6 sine of 18 degrees off both sides and then I'll need to again divide by m2 to get v2y by itself once again here I have m1 and m2 but the ratio of them which I know is going to be 0.7 it's a minus sign there because I had to subtract it off both sides um, this is 0.7 times 5.6 sine 18 degrees and just before I do that calculation this minus sign here is really important you can see everything else in this expression here the 0.7 the 5.6 the sine of 18 degrees they're all positive quantities but there's a minus sign out the front here and that tells me that the component in the y direction of the velocity of the eight ball is negative and in fact that's exactly what we thought it would be by the way we drew it the component uh, of the velocity of the eight ball does indeed point in the negative y direction in our diagram so it seems maybe our guess wasn't such a bad guess at all when I do this calculation I get a number here minus 1.21 meters per second and I'll just make a note of that over here that v2y is minus 1.21 meters per second in fact those two pieces of information the two components of the velocity of the eight ball after the collision they've told me the motion of that ball I've got all the information I need but now I might just combine them into a, a more useful way of telling me how fast in total that eight ball is moving and in what direction so I can find the speed of the eight ball that is the magnitude of the velocity so v2 here simply by thinking well, if I know the two components they're two sides in a right angle triangle here so the longest side that is the actual uh, velocity vector here will have a magnitude given by the square root of the sum of the squares of those so that will be uh, 0 0.472 squared plus minus 1.21 squared and if I do that calculation I come out uh, with a number of 1.3 meters per second so that's how fast that ball is moving after the collision I might like to know what direction as well uh, and for that I could think about the angle that it makes say for example with the x-axis that is with the original direction uh, of the white ball that was moving in so the angle there, as indicated on the diagram, will be the inverse tangent of the ratio of the y and x components. So that will be 1.21. As I've drawn that triangle, everything there will be a, a positive size, so I'll leave that as a positive number for now, divided by 0.472, that's the x component, and that calculation returns an answer of 69 degrees. So the final answer to this problem could be given as mentioned already as simply these two uh, velocity components here the x and y components of the eight ball after the collision or perhaps more conventionally you could say that the eight ball after the collision was moving at 1.3 meters per second in a direction at 69 degrees to the original direction of the white ball. Now an interesting follow-up that you might like to try yourself is to think about whether this collision was an elastic collision or an inelastic collision. That is, was kinetic energy conserved or not conserved? And that's a calculation you could do uh, by calculating the initial kinetic energy. It will be in terms of some multiplier of the mass, 
and then calculate the final kinetic energy. That will also be a quantity that's multiplying the mass because we don't have an exact value for the mass in this problem. And you could compare those two to see whether or not this collision is elastic.